Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, so let's see today's daily challenge on lead code and try to solve it together. So uh, we are given this problem, reschedule meeting for maximum free time. You are given an integer event time denoting the duration of the event. So the total duration of the event in which uh, meetings can take place is given by event time. So it means that t equals to zero to t equals to event time in this whole duration meetings can take place and you are given n meetings given by start time and end time you are given the start time and end time of n meetings okay so uh, you can reschedule at most k meetings to move their start time uh, while maintaining the same duration so uh, wh what is it is told that uh, there are various meetings given by intervals you can move one whole interval within the free time but you cannot swap any two meetings uh, so you cannot change the order of any two meetings. You can just move it at most k meetings. The k is the num a constraint which is given by the number of meetings which you can move. And you should uh, maximize the non-overlap. I mean, you should maximize the longest continuous period of free time. So uh, you should have a maximum of free time during the event. The relative order should stay, stay the same and you need to return the, what is the maximum amount of such free time possible. So uh, with an example, if I try to uh, make you understand is that uh, event time dot five means that the total time we have from t equals to zero to t equals to five, which is this zero to five is the total time. Now t equals to one, which means that I can move at most one interval. Okay. And start time is uh, one and end time is two. So the start time of one end time is two is given by one interval. The second interval has a start time of three and end time of five, which means this interval. And you can, you need to find contiguous free spaces. Okay. Contiguous free spaces. You see there is one free space here and one free space here. But what you can do is that if you can take this whole interval and shift it to the right, then you will have a free time of zero to two. That is the two free contiguous intervals. Okay. So I hope you get some idea of uh, what exactly is the problem. Okay. What exactly is the problem? And now you should uh, go ahead and try it on your own before watching the solution. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's see the approach of what things should come to your mind. So at first, at first, you should draw something like this, right? You should draw something like this. Uh, this is zero. This is whole event time T, okay? And within these times, your meetings will take place. Okay. You see, uh, this is some time. This is some time. And let's say this is some time. Okay. So uh, within this period, your meetings is supposed to take place. And uh, what will happen is that you will be given K. Okay. So let's say K is 1. So what you can do is that you can move at most one interval. So what you can do, what are the possible ways of which you can shift? So if you see, uh, you can shift to be something like this. Uh, what you can do, if you take this and shift to the left, you will get something like this. Okay. So uh, this can be a maximum possible free space. Okay. What you can do. So for k equals to 1, you can do this, right? Uh, let's say, let's try to do something else. What what else can you do here? Uh, let's say, try to move this block. Let's try to move this block and see that this might be the maximum value. This might have been the maximum value. So if I can try and move this block to the left, I will have something like this. I, if I move this and this might be the maximum value. So uh, whichever is the maximum. So let's say this is X. This interval is Y. And some other intervals are, let's say, some other values. We need to find what can be the maximum possible values of X, Y, and some other intervals. So the first question which should come to your mind is that how to know which interval to move? How to know which interval we should move? Which interval I should move? Okay. So... Uh, can you get what? So if you try to think this, if you try to think this, the thing which should come to your mind, what are we bothered about in this question? We are bothered about these gaps. These free times are the things we are bothered about. Okay. Okay. And what does this exactly mean? 
if you see, uh, let's say there is a gap. Let's say, uh, let me draw some a new one. Let me draw a new thing. And uh, it will be better to visualize them. So uh, let's say something like this is there. Something like this is there. And you have this one interval. You have a small interval, let's say here. You have some big interval, this. And let's say another small interval you have. So now uh, you need to shift K values, okay? You need to shift K values. And uh, this is, let's say, you are only considered about these gaps because I want to make continuous gaps and I want to find the largest possible such contiguous gap. So what can I do? What can I do is that I can tell that what is the length of this gap? Let's say this is two. What is the length of this gap? Let's say this is four. What is the length of this gap? Let's say uh, it is something like uh, five. Let's say the length of this is something like two again. And let's say the length of this is one. Okay. So you have gaps, which is given by, let's say an array of gaps. Okay. You can make something like this. Okay. You can easily make this array. Uh, let's call this gaps. This is the amount of gap, which is showing in each one of them. Okay. In each one of them, this is the amount of gap. So now can you tell me that what will happen to this gaps array? If I, if there is something like k equals to one and I choose need to choose one uh, interval to move. So can you say that if I choose to move this interval, then this will get shifted to here and this whole gap will three and five will get, get clumped together. This gap will get clumped together and the gap array will now become something like this. You do understand, right? Uh, this is what we will happen. Uh, like this is two, this will be eight, five plus three. And uh, there will be something like two again, and there will be something like one. Okay. So uh, I hope you understand that your gap array will become something like two, eight, two, one. Okay. Now you can tell me that why do I need to clump this? Uh, can, can't I move this vector? So in that case, what will be your gap array? Now these two, you, you saw that for K equals to one, for k equals to one, these two can get clumped up. Okay, uh, you can if you choose to move something else, you can clumped up maybe these two, five, five, two, one, and also maybe you can choose to clump these two, two, three, seven, one. Maybe now can you see? Can you see something like this? That we there is a window of length two which is moving. I mean, uh, this window of length two is two plus three. This window of length two is three plus five. This window of length two is uh, five plus two and so on. So for each operation, we are clumping some element. And for K operation, we will clump K plus one elements. So you see for K equals to one, you, cl you are clumping, clumping two elements, right? So for uh, you can clump K plus one element. What if there was two operations to perform. Let's say, uh, let's say you need to perform two operations here. So what you can do, let's say uh, you are performing both of these, right? Both of these in the sense that this is moving here and this is moving here. So in that case, three plus five plus two will whole get added up and give you the gap array to be something like uh, two, 11 and one. I hope you understand that. Okay. I hope you understand that if K was two, if K was true, this would have happened to the gap array uh, and maybe some other possibilities. So you can understand that for a length of K, for a length of K, there is a K plus one window. There is a K plus one window, which is sliding over the whole gap array. And I need to find the maximum value. So this is the maximum eight, right? This is the maximum eight. Uh, first, I was getting five. Then I got eight. Then clumping five and two, I got seven. Then clumping two and three, I'm getting three. So uh, by clumping five, eight, and then seven, then three, what is the maximum which I obtained? The maximum I obtained is eight. So similarly, if I take us uh, for k equals to two, if I take a sliding window of length three, I will get something like this uh, is that first I will clump these three things, uh, which will give me 10 not 10, uh, it will give me, uh, okay, it will give me 10, right? So uh, this will again give me 10 and R1. So uh, earlier I have told you this, earlier I had told you that uh, it will give you 11, but actually this is 10, actually uh, this is 10. So uh, whatever, whatever. 
so i hope you get the intuition now i hope you the intuition is uh, very very clear of how to approach this problem and how to uh, do that sliding window so let's see let's see the coding portion and i will explain you the code as i type it so uh, first i will try to create the gap array okay uh, so i will have an n which is nothing but start time dot size okay uh, and i will have a previous value so uh, I will, I am telling you what is this exactly. So I have a vector uh, which is gap. So in whatever way you like, you can uh, find the gaps array. So I am doing it something like, uh, let's say I want to construct a gap array of this thing. Okay. Uh, let's say I want to construct a gap array of this whole interval. So whatever I will do is that I will store a previous value P, which is zero, and then I will iterate through the start times. Okay, I will iterate through the start times and I will check uh, what is the difference from the start time to the previous value. Okay, so let's say some difference is there too. And then I will change my previous pointer to the end time of this. Okay, uh, let's say I change it to something like four. And uh, now I will again see the start time of, let's say this is the start time is five. Uh, let's say it is 9, then uh, this is 9 minus 4, then again I will get a gap of 5. So I hope you understand. I am storing the previous values of the end times and doing start time minus end time to find the gaps. Okay, so that's what I am doing. So I will do, uh, I will go through all the element in start time. Okay, and what I will do is that I will just simply uh, push back gaps dot push back. Uh, what I will push back is uh, start time start time of i minus p. Okay, so if there is zero, a gap of zero will be pushed. And uh, you see, I need to update the previous value also not to nothing but the end time end time of i. Uh, I hope you easily get this. I hope you easily get this. But uh, there will be a last segment which will be left. Okay, I hope you can visualize this too. After the iteration is complete, uh, we will break out of the loop at this point, but we have not entered this in our gap array. So this will be nothing but the time t minus the end time. Okay, uh, end time of uh, something like n minus one. I hope you understand this, right? So, uh, or we can just do previous, right? This was nothing but previous. Would be saved in the previous value. So uh, I can do that. I can do that easily. Uh, what I can do is that push back the last segment, uh, push the last gap. So what I'm doing here is nothing but pushing the last gap. Uh, so what I'm doing, uh, gaps dot push back of uh, and uh, this whole thing is event time, right? This capital T is nothing but this uh, event time. So I will just take this dot push back uh, event time minus p okay uh, even time minus p is the last segment which i just pushed back and uh, what i need to do is a simple sliding window over this whole gap uh the sliding window length uh what is the length of the sliding window is nothing but k plus one as i had already explained you so now uh, things become very trivial uh, i guess you will be easily able to do this uh so what do i need to do i need to first fill the first segment okay so I will have a sum which will uh, which will change itself. Okay, and uh, I'll just take the first interval, which is nothing but like this. So I am just. I hope you can understand this easily. Uh, gaps of i. I am just taking gaps of i and summing them, summing them up. And I will also have an answer, uh, which will be some initially. So I hope you understand this. Uh, the I am just not doing nothing but finding out the I mean, the first the sliding window of length is len. Okay, this is the length of my sliding window. So throughout the length of the of my sliding window, I am finding the first. I mean, the first window sum. First, this is nothing but the uh, finding the first window sum. Finding the first uh, window sum. So that's what I do. And now uh, the first sum I have already found out. I need to move from i equal to one now, and. Uh, I need to move till the time i plus len minus one. I hope you can easily understand that this is the length which uh, which will be at last. Okay, uh, which will be at last the sliding window of length len if we use. So if there is a slide, if there is a uh, sliding window of length, uh, 
x okay so uh, and the start point is something like uh, uh, let's say start okay so start plus x minus 1 is the end point okay if this length is x then it goes from start to start okay this is the both inclusive both inclusive is the this is the window length this is the sliding window length if you have already done problems uh, related to this sliding window so you will easily get this uh, no problem with that i guess uh, and i hope now it's uh, getting a little bit clear this will be gaps dot size because i am now iterating through the gaps array i am iterating through the gaps array okay so uh, what i need to do uh, is that first you see as I am taking elements in the sliding window. So let's say this is uh, my initial sum was nothing but 10. Okay. So as my window is moving from this to this, 2 is getting added in the window. So length becomes 10 to 12. And this 2 is this 2 get got added and these 2 got subtracted. So uh, I hope uh, you easily understand that uh, this will also again result in 10 because this 2 is subtracted and uh, if again it moves, then what will happen? 10 will become 11 first and then 3 will get reduced uh, to give you a 8. So uh, this will be nothing but 8. Okay. So this 10, 10, 8 is our sliding window length. So that's what I need to do. Uh, sum uh, minus equal to the previous element. Previous element is nothing but gaps of i minus 1. Okay. Uh, subtracting the uh, portion moving out moving out of window sum plus equal to uh, gaps of nothing but i i plus len minus one adding the portion coming in the window so, okay uh, so i hope i hope these things are intuitive to you okay adding you are just adding the portion uh, coming in the window coming in the room so uh, you are just doing these and uh, what you need to do is simply maximize your answer right you just need to maximize your answer with this sum variable and you just return answer at the end okay so uh, i hope this will work i hope this will work let's see if there is any error which we committed uh, so you see uh, it is giving an error that I did not put a semicolon. So let me put it and run it again. Uh, so you see, we have the accepted case. If we try to submit it and check if it works for all the cases. So yeah, it does work. We have a good runtime complexity, but not so good memory complexity. Uh, so why is that happening? Uh, is because I am creating a separate gaps array. Okay, I'm creating a separate gaps array. So what you can do, you can do this dynamically. You can do this dynamically also. Uh, so I, if I would have done that uh, without creating any gaps, it would, ha would have been really confusing for you. So that's why I did a separate gaps array. Otherwise, you can just put a single for loop and you can dynamically calculate each of the gaps. You can, you can dynamically calculate each of the gaps and the maximum values and the sum as well as the maximum value. So I hope, I hope you can easily do this. It may be you required that uh, you might be using a prefix sum there so it this method is very simple very clean uh, it is a simple o of n solution as you can see it so there is nothing bad with this so yeah that's all that's all i guess that's all for this problem this was a definitely medium problem of sliding window uh, if you have done sliding window problems before then this should have come to your mind so uh so th yeah that's all that's all for this problem I will meet you in the next video. Thank you so much.